guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what we're up to today. And if you are new to this channel, this is something I do with my husband, Chris. We take thrift store found items and we make them over here on our channel and share the process and the vision with you all of how we get these items ready to resell. And we resell them here locally. We have a couple booths and a local antique mall. So in today's video, I am going to be making over mostly metal items. There's a few little resin items in there. So when it comes to painting metal items, you just have to treat them a little bit differently because there's nothing to absorb the paint in. It's just kind of laying on top. You have to use a product that's going to stick to that metal and you gotta let it do some cure time before throwing it into your booth. So it's not something you can just paint and then get in that booth. So today is what I'm doing to these metal items to get them ready to resell, how I get them painted up, how I process them to get them prepped and ready. And then of course, we're gonna add a little bit of bling and we're gonna add some details to get them to pop. Well, here's what they all look like. All these metal items that I have found on my thrifting adventures. And now I'm getting it, group them ready and I'm ready to make a video for you all and share the process of how I upcycle these metal items to get them ready to resell. So here, let's take a little bit closer of a look. So we've got some metal clocks. Oh, definitely love to make over these. And then, yes, sir, I don't understand it. Are people getting out of doing tier trays because I randomly found in this grouping I have three of them to redo. Maybe it's because they're galvanized. I'm not sure but happy to run across those. We got a couple watering cans, a whole bunch of crosses which is are one of my good selling items and just some odds and ends. And yes you do see a random storage box and a little storage tin. And then I do have one metal sign in this grouping. And hi, Mary, I'm doing your stars that you sent me in the mail. Thank you so much. Well, first things first, I need to get the candle out of this metal jack-o'-lantern. So I'm using, I got a lot of response like, hey, put it in the freezer. So we'll see that piece later. So after I took those off the table, I just actually got them all onto my boards because I'm gonna be carrying them in and out of our spray room. So that's why they're all on boards if you're new to our channel. So I'm going ahead and getting them clean using some super clean and some hot water. Just getting all the tags, any residue, anything that would prevent paint from sticking on these items. Then I go through and I remove any hanger systems. As you see, this has a lot of hanger systems on it. So I'm just gonna get those removed. I would be replacing them at the end, but just not to deal with it as of right now. Now, especially when it comes to metal items, there is nothing for paint to soak in, kind of like the resin. There's a few resin pieces on here, as I stated earlier. Th there's nothing for the paint to soak into, so you definitely want to get them as clean as possible. Make sure that they are as dry as possible also. It, prep is the most important, the most important of flipping items is making sure that your paint that you're going to be repainting them is going to adhere and stay for longevity. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's just not possible, like on this resin cross, if I would try to remove that hanging system, I would crack it. So sometimes you just have to leave them as is. And as much as I would like to remove the whole system, the whole clock system, the face, all that, <laughs> this was just a tease when I started pulling this apart. I'm like, oh, I get to remove this because it'd be easier to spray. Nope, it's glued in there. So just put it back together and tape it off. Yep, plain old Dollar Tree masking tape to tape off the backs. But then I also turn in them around because I'm going to be spraying them and I make sure that I tape off the mechanism so I don't get any spray paint in where the works are, where your battery is. Now for these tear trays, it's just easier to take them inside in hot water and wash them up that way. For these stars that Mary was so kind to send me from her, I believe her granddaughter's graduation party and thought that I could upcycle them. The bottom part is the MDF board where it's a little bit porous on the side. So to seal that in, I'm just going to give it a couple coats of shellac and they're ready done. So I thought, you know, I'm going to save that bottom. So I just mask and taped off that bottom also. Yep, if you fast forward through all that prep, I get it, I understand. But now it's time to get these undercoated and get these painted with some Rust-Oleum in the flat black. And this is the where the spray room um, comes in handy because I have them on a turntable, I have them on a board, and then I can do a three stick 60 of spray and get both sides as most, most coverage 
coverage on my first spray. Let's this time see if I have my tripod locked. I guess it was just randomly going up. I must not have had a tight spin on that. So here we are now, even though I don't have to spin this as much as those standing crosses. Now this is what I meant when I said I tape off that mechanism so I don't get any spray paint. These were all working locks. I take a battery with me to the thrift store and make sure they work before I purchase them. Yeah, early on in my thrifting career, I got so excited bringing home clocks and then only to find out that, oh, they didn't work. So anyway, so yeah, if you, you're interested in doing clocks and you're out thrifting, carry a battery with you. And yes, I know that you can buy new mechanisms. Back in the day, I did buy the new mechanisms, but the price is they're going up at Goodwill, so the price that I'm thrifting the cl clocks for, and then if I buy a new mechanism, there's just no resale in my area for doing that. So I just need to make sure that they work before I bring them home. And if not, I do have a couple of clocks in my own house that are pretty that I just use, I just use for decor pieces that don't work. And then I will share with you, when I was shellacking, I did do a couple sh coats of shellac. This is mostly a metal sign, but that faith is paper. So sometimes with my idea of what I'm gonna be doing to, to this at the end, sometimes paper and metal gives you such a fit. So I've learned that if I just really seal it in there with a couple coats of shellac, I usually don't have any problems with what I'm gonna be doing with it. And now we have the tear trays. Make sure that those are good and dry. I actually took the air compressor to make sure that in the seams or anything, since I had soaked them in the sink of water, that there wasn't any hidden water that was going to be dripping because I was going to be turning them every which way, trying to get every piece of this spray painted. And as you see, uh, those round objects like to roll. So you need a little bit of something. I have these little helpers that help keep it right there. I'm not even sure what, what they're called. Sometimes I use hockey pucks that I have thr thrifted off so when I um, have round objects. So yeah, I'm just trying to get in there as best as I can. You, When you're painting metals, you just want to keep moving quickly. You don't want that paint to pull up and start running because it is a mess to try to have to sand on a metal. It just, it does not end up very pretty. And then really getting into this bread box, it's a metal bread box, guys. I, I don't know if it's a bread box, storage box, what it is. I'm going to be calling it a storage box, but I just, like I said, I'm just taking that air compressor. I'm getting in those seams. I'm making sure that there isn't any water because what will happen is after you spray, all of a sudden you'll see these random drips because water had come out. So yes, the air compressor, blow dryer, something just to help where that metal rolls, sometimes that water pools up in it. And I'm really hoping that you're not seeing my hot mess of myself too much on camera because when I'm doing all this spray painting, it's not absorbing into this metal at all. And I just get that spray paint all over my person. So I always get all my spray painting done, especially when I'm doing this black early in the morning. And then that way I can let it dry, but I can hop in the shower as soon as I'm done doing this. Because look, as I'm spraying into in the inside of this, you can see all that coming back. That's why I'm ventilated. I've got fans going. I got the ventilation system going. I'm trying to be as protective as I possibly can be. I don't know about you all, but yes, this is that prepping, that spraying. The detail work is your glamorous, let's call it. But all this, nah, not so much. <laughs> it's satisfying. Covering up what the yucky color is is so satisfying to watch. 
But yeah, I'm not. I, I am one of those people that wears a lot of paint on me after I'm done painting. So this cute little metal box, the box itself was actually painted with something. So that was perfect. I washed that in the sink just like I did the tear trays. But I also washed its lid. Now if I would have known, I would never have thrown it in the sink because look at it wasn't real paint it was paper so oh see this is what i mean by having to try to scrape paper off is no fun now i will say this was not the easiest of tape jobs on these watering cans but what i did was i just stuffed as you see some plastic bags inside and then used some masking tape the, the inside of these were perfectly fine there was no reason that i had to paint these are going more going to be a decorative piece now after i get them finished up so i just left the insides as is Okay, I feel really good now that I've gotten to take a shower and now these are all dry. So the nice thing about using a matte spray paint is you know when it's dry because it's not shiny anymore. So to seal that black spray paint and I'm going with in with some Rust-Oleum in the clear coat. <laughs> and nope, this does, just takes a little bit to get this sealed in, but I definitely go over a couple times, especially when there's detail like on this frame. And then yes, I'll be spraying all the pieces and then after the clear coat is dry, then I can flip them over and plop them over, trying to get all the surface area covered that I can possibly with that black spray paint. And then sometimes in the grouping, I have a little bit of catch up to doing. Well, one, I had to get all that paper off that stupid lid that I was not very happy about. No, I, I'm just going to vent right there. And then I know, I know, I know some of you are going to be so sad that I am painting over this jack o lantern but i will tell you from my experience of reselling things that are orange that are traditional in my booth they don't sell so far my fall season if i had anything just left like this it would have came back home with me or i would have redonated it so unfortunately for those who loved it for me i'm gonna love it as black so black it is and now that that Rust-Oleum clear coat is dry, I flip everything over. Now you can see the area where you did not get with your first coat. Some things, yep, they have to be laid on their side. Some things are perfectly fine the way that they are. But yes, those tear trays are going to take a little bit of getting into every little area. So back in the spray room I go to do some more spraying. And luckily this is more minimal than the first coating that I had to do. I always try to get my most surface area with my first spray that I just have a little touch up. Oh, this tag almost got me. I thought it was printed on the bottom of that galvanized, but it wasn't. Once I sprayed it, it was definitely a detail that popped out. So yep, I pulled that bad boy off and whew, almost got me there. So if you're curious on how many cans of black spray paint I went through for this project, I believe it was a total of three, maybe three and a half. And I didn't even go through half a can of the clear coat. So cost efficient, I think so. If you're just, the way that the Rust-Oleum spray paint adheres so well two metals for me for the longevity. It's my go-to. Yes, I believe you could have used a chalk paint and a spray or two if you'd like. I mean, you just do what works for you. And I'm a creature of habit. And this is just one of those things that have always turned out nice for me. So I just keep doing what I know. And then, yep, I go back in again one more time with that clear coat and hit all that new newly sprayed black making sure that it is good and sealed in there if it's not sealed in there it's just laying on top of this metal guys so you want some kind of a clear coat to make sure that it is sealed in that it is not going to as a lot of these i'm going to be painting white with a chalk paint and if i didn't it's just going to turn into a gray monkey mess or as i'm painting it i could accidentally scrape it just for me i like sealing these in so now I am absolutely in love with this Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the white linen. I love using it in our sprayer. I've got that Truco Graco 360 spray. Absolutely love it. So I'm going to share with you yet again. I remember like every few videos to sh share with you how to water down the paint. So we just have an old can that we just pour it in. I don't even know why I poured it into the can because it looks... <laughs> 
I guess for the video because I could have just poured the water into that can but it is what it is and I was already in the motion. They say when you're watering your paint down as you want I'd like a 10% ratio so after watching the Annie Sloan chalk paint who is she's an awesome um what she, I know I'm not using it but uh, cost efficient so what I'm doing here is I am making sure that there's no worming so when I'm mixing that in with the water that the paint is not laying on top of the paint so when I get enough water in there the paint will just immerse in and become one. I didn't show adding it into the paint sprayer, but this is the paint sprayer. And what I'm doing here is I'm priming it. I'd already squeezed the bottom, made sure there was no air in there. And now I just needed to make sure that it was primed, that all the air is out of the system. But look at how it just destroys and whew, I can get these painted in no time. But be careful because it does have some force with it that it might knock your freshly painted items over. Now, do you need to have a sprayer? No, you do not. I definitely could have hand painted these. I had back in the day, but as many as I mass produce to resell, yes, the sprayer is a blessing. And it, when you put this much hard work into something, it is nice to have some tools that help you achieve things a little bit faster. And stuff with a lot of detail like those crosses or even getting inside of this bread box no i will probably not be able to get every little crevice of the inside of this bread box but boy i will get 90 percent of it so that is nice but especially when it comes to metals you want to keep that sprayer moving you don't want to hold it there too long you definitely don't yet again sorry you don't want drips and runs because they're no fun to have to sand but for these tear trays, I am going to go in and hand paint them just the way that I want. A lot of that black still showing. Yes, I could. Uh, you have chalk paint, you can wipe it off, but not, it's just not the same. It's just not the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and kind of make these look like my version of enamelware. When it comes to selling these tear trays, I've had a few little options of I've been able to paint um the galvanized before and i've been able to have some wood ones and i will say so far the best sellers is when i paint them to look like enamel wear and so as you see what i'm doing is i have one of these flared brushes i'm leaving that outer edge i want that black detail to show so it's kind of it's telling you where it wants the paint to be so each one of these tear trays have a little bit where the metal is rolled on so that's what i'm using as my guide for my paint so yep you're just gonna have to go in gingerly you're just gonna have to take your time this is not one of those i'm gonna rush this and get this done that's what that sprayer was for so yep for these tear trays i'm just gonna go in and take my time and as I had to go leave to go get some of the Clorox wipes going, well, that was a rookie mistake. Like I've never done this before. Yes, especially when you're painting anything, you should always have something wet so you can get those quick little areas where you accidentally got paint where you didn't want them. I do that when I'm painting a room. I just always have something wet with me. That way I can wipe it off immediately when I don't want an area that I painted accidentally being painted. And the nice thing about spraying those in with that clear coat is yes, it easily wipes right off. But then I'm not also not going to stress as I'm painting along if I do get any that I didn't wipe off or just wasn't an angle that I could see. The Waverly Chalk Paint in ink matches the Rust-Oleum Black perfectly. So at the end of getting all these done, I will go back through and look for any of those little areas that I need to clean up.
And as I'm painting these, I am just painting them what's pleasing to my eye. So yes, the other two have a lot of the white on it and some of the black showing. Now on this one, just the way that it is, the angles trying to get into inside of it, I'm just gonna go ahead and just paint that room around the outside in the white. For this little tin, I'm gonna do that same thing. I didn't spray paint the inside. I'm not gonna worry about painting the outside. I wanted to leave those handles, so that's why I didn't use the sprayer on these. So I'm just gonna go around and do that same thing. I'm gonna just paint this on with using this flare brush. I absolutely love this flare brush for, I'm not about putting a whole bunch of paint on and rushing it. I don't mind, I like painting. I find it very relaxing to do. Um, yeah, sometimes when you get that many pieces, it, it does kind of take the fun out of it, but the sprayer does help. So, yep, I'm just going to go in full strength on this Rust-Oleum, and then I, when it comes to this little handle, I'll just gingerly work around it. That flare brush, the, I picked this up randomly at um, Five Below in a pack, and when I go to just find the brush itself I would just like more of just these brushes I can't find it just as itself or if I do it has such a long handle I'm like oh I I need that's not how I need it but you know luckily so far this one has cleaned up really nice And then the same thing with these watering cans. I'm going to leave some of those rims, some of those rolled edges of the metal, making them look like that enamelware, and just gingerly going in and painting the areas white that I want. I'm not sure, maybe it would have been easier just to paint them all white and then go back in and do the trim. Mm, I don't know, this is just how I did it. When I go in for my second coat after the first coat is dry, I just, my way of doing it is I just take my brush, I dip it in a little bit of paint and a little bit of water. That way it thins that paint down. If I left it full strength of the Rust-Oleum, it would start removing the paint because this chalk paint likes to be water distressed. So this is just what works for me. I know some people use a sprayer, but on these smaller objects, it's a little bit hard. I don't want to get the whole thing wet and I just have I guess I have some control issues so this is just the way that I like to do it it just needs that second coat needs to be watered down a little bit and then for the third coat I'll just go around looking for any of the areas where I can see transparency of where the white some of the black is still showing Now I find that this Rust-Oleum chalk paint distresses very easily. So for this tear tray, I don't want to take, I don't want that white paint coming off. So all I'm doing is going in with some 220 sandpaper and hand sanding that. I want that to stay white. Now if this piece looks wet, that's because I did take a little bit of a wet wipe. Just quickly ran it, ran it over there to make sure I got all the sandy dust off. Now I'm actually going in because I'm actually painting a dresser the same time I'm doing this project. Because you're always watching, waiting for paint to dry. And I'm actually, the black that I have right here is the Chippy Barn paint. <laughs> so, eh, you know, you use what you have. And I had plenty of it just for a little bit of touch up to where I touched the areas that I didn't want to be white. So I'm just going in and doing that detail work. So if you watch my channel often enough, you know that I have a problem finding Lazy Susans. Not a problem, I find Lazy Susans all the time. And this one was a tiny little one, so I could not pass it up for 99 cents at the Salvation Army. So then I had to find, what am I going to do with it? Well, I, yeah. Anyway, so I thought this tear tray needed something, needed to be rised up a little bit. I could have put feet on it, I could have what have you but so i'm like hey i think it would be neat to have this little lazy susan on the bottom of this three tier tray so for some extra glueiness here i am using the gorilla glue and then i'm using some of the star bond the star bond is going to give me that quick fix but i just really want to make sure that this is a kitchen item and it's going to be spinning around that it's really attached so and if you see this random metal piece that is um, rolling down my glue that is one of my leftover when i was cleaning out my salon for my retirement i'm like hey i could use these keys on the glue so those were perfect
Now what you're going to see me do here is I'm going to spray that metal. So I'm using the accelerator to spray. If I were to start spraying the piece itself, what would happen was my glue would start to be drying before I got it adhered to the back of it. And then I'll spray it one more time and that'll give it a 15 second nice hold while that Gorilla Glue is just double glued so I know that it is adhering well. I haven't shared this tip in a while that where you just wipe off that excess glue that's on the bottle, put in a little bit of Vaseline, and then you can put that glue top back on and then you don't have to worry about it sticking. So now it's time to reattach before I get this all distressed. So I absolutely love the pop of wood when it comes to black and white pieces. So I left that handle just as it was. I thought it was pretty in itself, but yep, I just need to get it back in there and screw it back in. So kind of how that rolled edge of the metal told me what my black needed to be. On this piece, it actually tells me where I need to distress. So I'm just going in with a wet wipe and then just taking some of that white paint off, just doing a little bit of distress and showing some of these features. And then what, as I'm wiping it off with a wet wipe, and if it looks a little bit of gray where the paint has kind of been watered down by the wet wipe, I just take a dry paper towel and wipe off the excess. So I get more black than gray. And the same thing when it comes to these boxes. This had those little bump outs. This is those features when I'm thrifting, when I'm looking at an item, they're like, oh, I know that the painting technique that I love to do that's true to my heart, I, I love to distress. I love to see those pops and so yes when i'm when i'm thrifting i'm thinking taking that all into consideration of how this finished piece will look and even on these watering cans there's a little bit of bump out on these two so i'm going to go in and distress it there's no need for me to go in to randomly distress in places because i do have a little bit more stuff that i'm going to be sharing with you in here in a little bit but these are just the places that i envision for it to be distressed just to show those little hidden details that are covered up by that white when I was painting on this bread box, I don't know if you all saw how much texture it had. I don't know if the person that owned it before did this textured spray paint on it or if this was the manufacturer's, how it was it was done. So it is just going to have a little bit of texture. It's got some flat area where those long rectangles are. But other than that, I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to go hit all the edges that I can and letting some of that pop it's not going to pop as much as a smooth surface would but that's okay it's just going to be that perfectly imperfect when it comes to pieces like these crosses that have all this detail oh be still my heart because i absolutely this is the kind of detail that i really love to pop that's why i take the time to spray paint it there's just a different look than getting the paint in and then dry brushing the white on um, it's just it, whatever look that you're going for, but I like to have that white on there and then go back in with a wet wipe and just pop all those details. But I definitely love how these crosses turned out. Kind of like if you've seen my mirror videos, oh, when they have a lot of texture and a lot of detail, how it just makes them pop by distressing of that black and that white just makes those details pop. When it comes to this cross, all I'm going to do, if I actually have a flower video too where I had done some Dollar General flowers and yeah. So all I'm doing is going in and just hitting those petal leaves ever so slightly. Just enough to emphasize those little leaves just to give that little detail. And then I'll go around just those sharp edges where the two corners meet of this cross and just make those details pop. And I don't know if that was too much on you all, but every one of these pieces, yes, they all got undercoated and they all got sprayed with, you know, sprayed with the white, but there's just so many different ways to bring out details and distress them just to emphasize what I consider to be their best features. So now I'm just going in and that chalk paint needs to be sealed in. So I'm going in with some more of that Rust-Oleum clear coat. This is probably where I used a whole bottle by the end of this video, but yes, a little bit goes a lot long way I'm sealing that chalk paint in now now I do have a few pieces that are staying black and a couple of those stars Mary was so generous to send me five of these stars so I thought I have three white and I'm doing two of them in black so now what I'm doing here is going in and distressing the bottom of this MDF board just to make the wood pop, give it a little bit of distressing, just using some 220 sandpaper and then making sure that that's nice and smooth. 
just in case you are new to my channel today and visiting it for the first time, I absolutely love using Waverly Antiquing Wax, a brown wax on black items. Oh, it just richens up that black. And then where I had distressed it, it just brings out that distressing even more. If you notice that none of the clocks got painted white, they really sell for me well just painting them black. Unless they have a whole bunch of detail that I think I can go in and de-stress on. Most of the time, I do leave these metal ones black. So same thing, this one, this wax is going to richen up that black and just give it something a little bit more. And then it's also going to help and one more level of protection to steal that paint in. And yes, these were clear coated also. And Mr. Jack-O-Lantern is going to get a little bit of the Brown Waverly Wax also. I know I'm going to hear it from some people that loved him as is, but oh, he sure is cute all buffed in this brown wax in his black. So now we're on to the detailing step. So I have these three items and oh, you guys, do I have a plan for these. That sunflower stamp from IOD is one of my best sellers. We're still in the season, so I could not help myself when I envisioned these items and painting them white. I had done some Dollar General trays and I had not antiqued them and left them, left them white. And that day I put them in, that day they sold. So they're already all gone. So I hope I can find some more trays to do it on. But yes, I am going to be doing some tissue paper stamping with these IOD sunflower stamps to decoupage onto these items. So just using some tissue paper from the Dollar Tree store. I just have my, the smaller of the sunflower, the other large one was a little too large and I just have it on my flexible mount. And so I just have it all inked up. Now I'm gonna try to get four of these onto this paper here. So I just gingerly flip it over, holding it so it doesn't shift, so it doesn't get that blurry. And then I just take my Cricut scraping tool and make sure that the ink is distributed onto the tissue paper. The ink will go all the way through, so I make sure that I have an extra piece of vellum underneath so I'm not messing up my Cricut mat, my grid mat. And so now I can just move it over so I can do that other corner. Now to cut this out out of the tissue paper, I got four of these on here. I'm just using a fine paintbrush, a little bit of water. I guess you can buy a water blendy pen, um, but I already have this and I didn't have to pay any more money for it. So, so I'm just going to go around and outline the flower, um, getting that tissue paper wet. And then what's going to happen is, is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to pull it apart. It leaves a nice thin edge. It's not raised. This tissue paper does not like to cut so easy. And so you all shared with me a long time ago on doing this and I have done it ever since. Thank you all. First up is this little box. And yes, I could force it that that whole sunflower could fit, but then it looks like I'm forcing it. It's okay that you don't see the whole thing. So I'm just going to off center it, get the most on the front of it, and then slightly go off to the side. And then some of it's gonna get a cut off. It, yet again, it's that perfectly imperfect. It does not have to be perfectly straight. So I'm just using some Mod Podge and just trying to make a nice thin coat, just enough to make this tissue paper stick so somebody had directed me to the reclaimed heirloom i believe on doing some saran wrap to help with your decoupage paper and it must mean the decoupage papers because i do give it a try with the saran wrap ball but i think the tissue paper is a little bit thinner i know some tissue decoupage papers are much thicker and so i didn't really feel as if it was working okay but I still, I guess I'm a touch and feel kind of person. I, I didn't mind using my fingers and I don't mind if there's wrinkles. And I'm gonna go over the top of it with some more of the Mod Podge 
and then I'm going to start out my little petal tips first to make sure that those are good in here and I'm going to try really hard just to work up to that black line on the bottom not to get too much of it glued down but just getting that all sealed in now for my watering cans, I'm going to use the assistance of these two lint rollers. This is going to help this round object stay in place that I'm not fighting it as it's rolling. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm not going to force that entire sunflower to try to fit and overwhelm this watering can. So as you see, it just, it does. It takes away from that distress scene. It takes away from the enamel wear. You just want a little soft detail. So, yep, I'm just going to figure out where to cut it, what is pleasing to my eye, just to give it a little something, a little additive, just a little bit of bling. When it comes to DIY, when it comes to crafting, when it comes to even reselling your pieces, if you're not just doing them for yourself, just always do what you love. Do something until you love it. And I truly believe that others will love it too. Same thing here. I'm just putting some more Mod Podge on the top of these petal tips first and then working my way down and trying to really not get it on the edges because this is a glue and this is metal. So if I get that glued, it's probably going to pull it up a little bit off that little bottom edge. But remember that we got some black paint that can touch that up. And I do go down around with a wet wipe, just making sure that I get any of that excess off the other areas that I didn't necessarily want to have glued. And so I'm going to go in and the same thing. I'm going to figure out where this flower placement does this watering can justice. We're going to go ahead and move on to this storage box. I just... I know, uh, yeah, I guess I would have called it ugly in the thrift store, but what got me was it was metal. It had the bottom storage. It had the top storage, and you can always paint stuff, so I don't ever shy away from that. So I am going to my Tim Holtz. This has two areas that need some detail on it, and I didn't want to overword something, and I absolutely love it. I don't think I have anything left in my booth that has this decoupage paper from Tim Holtz left, so yep, why not? One of the things I'm trying to do right now is use the supplies that I have up before I ordering anything new for the holiday season. Are you all like that? I'm like, I need to use what I have before ordering and spending more money. So I'm just, I'm staying away from the wording that's on that reoccurring pattern of the roll. And I'm just trying to pick out the, what flowers are the best because I'm going to be putting wording at the top. So I don't want it to be over wordy if there is such a thing. So same thing with the Maj Podge. I'm just going to go and put a thin layer down. I prefer this little, these brushes to the foam. You just use what works for you. We all have our little things that work the best for us. But I love that you all share tips with me. So keep them coming because some of them definitely come in handy. I will sell that I definitely love to do the tissue paper on metal and I love to stamp in metal because sometimes when you're trying to do a vinyl stencil, it doesn't go so well and it pulls up the paint off of your metal object that you painted because it takes a long time for paint to cure onto metal. And so I'm just using the typesetting letters from IOD. Uh, making sure that they fit first. I don't know why I thought the way that I had them, it was going to grab that off uh, sometimes, but just making sure that all my letters are in level order and that I have my spacing, but definitely a perfect fit. So I did kind of turn it a little bit just so I could see a little bit better. I love to film for you all and let you see what I'm doing, but sometimes that has made me go a little bit crooked. So sorry guys, I'm turning it so I can see this a little bit better. So I'm just getting this all inked up before holding my breath tight that I don't slit, I don't shift, and that it just stays a nice clear stamp. How about you all? So I think I finally found an item that I can use my Kirby letters. I've had these letters for so long. It's one of the first letters that I have ordered, these swoosh letters from IOD, but I never find anything that I can, that fits. Oh, so now I can use them as a welcome sign for this. Just a simple welcome sign. Yep, that's all I'm going to be doing. 
So, yep, the thing about the swoosh stamps is it's a cursive, so you kind of have to go one by one as you're laying them down. So, and I, as you see, my E is missing because it only comes with one E and I need to reuse the E. So, my, I had tried um, some of this masking tape when I was doing some balls that I was t typing or doing some stamping of numbers on and that worked out just fine so I thought you know what since I have to individually do each one of these letters that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to use this two inch masking tape from the Dollar General to hold these I'm going to get it all inked up and during this whole process I probably should have had a heart attack because I was like <gasps> I kept holding my breath and making sure that I was centered and then I'm like <gasps> okay I'm committed now I have to gingerly rub that ink on there so it's transferring over. Okay, well only six more letters to go, but I definitely want to make sure that I don't smear where I just ink, so I'm going to take a blow dryer and make sure that is dry. Okay, five more to go, but I won't make you torture watching each and every one of these letters. Just with this cursive, you just have to be very patient. The L for this is very big, so I'm just centering it more in towards the whole frame itself and making sure that it's touching just a little bit. It may not be the normal cursive writing, but I'm just making the best out of it. Now, after letting the Maj Podge dry, actually I let it dry overnight, um, I'm just going back in with an emery board and just cutting that excess off. For the water in cans, I'm going to go in with an X-Acto knife because if I took that emery board along the bottom, that is painted black, so it would probably just scrape all that paint right off. So, yep, just going in. I tried really hard not to get the glue on there, but eh, it might have happened. But, yep, I'm just going to go in very slowly and just get this tissue paper off. But when I started to use the emery board on this storage box, I'm like, oh, oh, I'm seeing some of that burgundy come through. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the X-Acto knife too. I can touch that up with a Sharpie, I think. But yeah, I'm definitely going to go in with the X-Acto knife. So since I stamped this with stays on ink and I let it dry overnight and that tissue paper all has been sealed in with another layer of the Maj Posh, I'm just going in with some of my Barathane finishing wax and just giving them a finished coat to make them feel nice and good and make sure that all that paint is securely on there. My last thing to finish up with these pieces is just to put a hanging system back on this. Now this had like three different hangers on it. It had the two on the side, which I'm not a fan of. If they have to be, they have to be there, but this one is a lightweight, so it can just handle one of those little hangers that you just tap in. So I'm just going back in and making sure that the original one was centered. I'm not gonna trust it. I've got some trust issues. And just making sure that this one that I'm putting on is centered and then just hammering it in.
Okay, what did you think of me doing my metal flips? Oh my gosh, I just absolutely love. I know some of them are resin pieces, but I absolutely love those crosses. I love anything with detail. I love to paint that undercoat of black and get it distressed in white and just make all those details that were just hidden by one color just pop. I don't know what you guys just thought about it is but and then tear tray what the heck's going on with some tear trays why is everybody getting i okay well it was random just happened to be one i had thrifted way earlier and two i'd ran across in the thrift store maybe somebody was redecorating and i don't know i was happy to come across them i actually at the moment have a lot of tear trays in my inventory so i got to be a little bit on the careful side not to get too many i, I maybe leave some to the thrift store to somebody else so as always tell me what your favorite flipped item was today and would you have left anything alone would you have changed i love just hearing your ideas that you all share with me because sometimes i use those ideas ideas. You know, you have to get insp inspiration from all around you. So thanks for watching today's video, guys. And if I have inspired you in any way, give me a quick comment and a like so YouTube knows that you like this kind of content. And if you're new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked and enjoyed, please hit the subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys. Bye!